Just one year ago, Jamie Newman was one of the hottest names in all of college football. He had just transferred to Georgia from Wake Forest and was immediately considered to be one of the favorites to win the Heisman Trophy. He was also receiving a lot of early draft hype as many expected him to be a first round pick, potentially being one of the top quarterbacks taken off the board. Now, fast forward a year later and we never saw him take a snap for the Bulldogs and he just went undrafted in the NFL draft. So what exactly went down in the last year for Jamie Newman and will he ever play a meaningful snap of football again? Before we get to today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to the channel. If you love college football content, then this is definitely the place for you. Also, if there's a player you'd like to see a video on in the future, drop a comment down below and it very well could be my next video. So before we talk about Jamie Newman and everything that happened in the last year, let's go way back to the beginning. He attended Graham High School in Graham, North Carolina. He was rated as a three-star quarterback and had offers from a number of schools, including West Virginia and Duke. He ultimately decided to stay close to home and commit to Wake Forest, which was less than an hour away from his hometown. During his first season at Wake Forest in 2016, Newman took a redshirt year. He served as the backup quarterback in 2017 to John Walford. He barely saw any action as he attempted only four passes on the season. He entered as the backup quarterback again in 2018, but this time to Sam Hartman. With four games left in the season, Hartman went down due to injury and Jamie Newman became the team's starting quarterback. And he looked pretty damn good. Against NC State, he threw for 300 yards with three touchdowns and added about 50 yards on the ground as Wake Forest picked up the victory. Newman led a game-winning drive as Wake Forest was down by four points with a minute remaining and needed to go 80 yards for the win. Well, Newman drove him down the field and threw a 32-yard touchdown with 30 seconds left to give him the victory. Two weeks later against Duke, Wake Forest picked up another win and Jamie Newman threw for 200 yards with four passing touchdowns and 50 rushing yards. Newman then led another game-winning drive in the Birmingham Bowl against Memphis. With a minute left, Wake Forest trailed by four points. In a little over 30 seconds, Newman drove him down the field 75 yards and rushed in a one-yard touchdown to give him the lead with 30 seconds left on the clock. For the game, he finished with over 300 yards and a passing touchdown while adding 100 yards on the ground with three rushing touchdowns. Just like that, it looked as if Wake Forest had found their starting quarterback of the future. Jamie Newman and Wake Forest's 2019 campaign got off to an incredible start. They won their first five games of the season and were up to number 19 in the AP poll. Jamie was quietly putting together a Heisman campaign. Against Utah State, he had 450 total yards with four touchdowns. Against Rice, he had 350 total yards with three touchdowns. Against North Carolina, 300 yards and three touchdowns. Against Elon, 350 yards and five touchdowns and against Boston College, 350 yards and two touchdowns. You can make the case that he was playing like one of the best quarterbacks in the entire country through the first month of the season. Number 19 Wake Forest then hosted a 3-2 Louisville team, and it was an absolutely crazy game. After trailing by as many as 21, Wake Forest rallied back and cut the deficit to only three with a minute remaining. Unfortunately though, they couldn't pull off the come from behind victory and lost the game 62-59. to Newman had an okay game, as he completed 50 percent of his passes but through two costly interceptions he also only rushed for 13 yards the second least amount he'd have in a game all season however this was largely due to the fact that he injured his shoulder during the game he got hit on a play early in the game and exited but he returned later his performance the rest of the game just wasn't that great and it was likely due to his shoulder he'd missed the next three weeks but returned against nc state and he had a fantastic performance as he had five total touchdowns and wake forest picked up the win moving to 7-1 on the season. They were ranked 22 and looked to be competing for a spot in the ACC title game. But then, their season ended on a downward spiral. They lost four of their final five games that season. After being 7-1, they finished the season 8-5. Newman's struggles were a large reason for the collapse. Over his final five games, he threw only six touchdowns and had six interceptions. Against Clemson, he threw for only 41 yards, and against Syracuse, 71. In their bowl game against Michigan State, he completed only 12 passes. In four of the final five games, he had a completion percentage of under 46, 
For the 2019 season, he completed 61% of his passes for 2,900 yards with 26 passing touchdowns and 11 interceptions. He also ran for just under 600 yards with 6 rushing touchdowns. He ranked second in the ACC in total offense, averaging 287 yards per game, and finished fifth in passing with 253 yards per game. Once the season ended, Jamie Newman announced that he'd be entering the transfer portal as a grad transfer. In January of 2020, he announced that he was going to be taking his talents to Georgia. He picked Georgia over the likes of Maryland, Miami, Oregon, and Washington. With him headed to the Bulldogs, many assumed that he'd be the favorite to be the starter. The other quarterbacks on the roster were Stetson Bennett, who was the team's backup the previous year, Dewan Mathis, who missed all of 2019, and 2020 signee Carson Beck. And the hype started to grow with Jamie Newman. He was top three or top five in many preseason Heisman odds, as well as being very high in way too early 2021 mock drafts. David Pollock of ESPN had Jamie Newman as a future first rounder, as did CBS Sports, who had the new Georgia quarterback as the number eight overall prospect and the number three overall quarterback behind Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields. Sports Illustrated's Monday Morning Quarterback had Newman coming off the board at number 20 overall in the way too early mock draft and Matt Miller had Newman at number 29 overall. Mel Kuyper Jr. had Newman as the number four quarterback on his board behind Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, and Trey Lance. Days after that, Kuyper went on public airwaves and questioned if Newman could be the next great transfer quarterback after three such players went number one overall in the previous three drafts. The hype was truly building around Jamie Newman. But then in May, former five-star and USC quarterback JT Daniels transferred to Georgia. Then, in September, prior to the season starting due to COVID pushing it back, Jamie Newman announced that he'd be opting out of the season to prepare for the NFL Draft. Here was the statement that he released. With much prayer and discussion with my family, I would like to announce that due to the uncertainties of this year amid a global pandemic, I will officially opt out of this football season to prepare for the upcoming 2021 NFL Draft. I would like to thank Coach Smart for extending the opportunity for me to be a part of the University of Georgia football program. Although my time has been short, I've built some great relationships and I've had a chance to continue my development. As I prepare for the journey ahead, I remain hopeful and excited about what the future holds, especially during these challenging times in our world. So just like that, Jamie Newman's collegiate career was over. Now this is what I really want to know more about. Now he opted not to play because of COVID. That is more than a valid excuse and I totally get it. If he didn't feel safe playing, that's totally okay. But I just feel like there's more to the story than meets the eye. I know that there have been rumors of JT Daniels potentially looking better in camp and Newman was worried about not even getting the starting job. Now, that is definitely possible. However, I think that Newman would have been named the starter due to him just being a grad transfer. Plus, I don't think JT Daniels was actually healthy enough by then anyway. But still, maybe Newman thought that he'd eventually get beat out and didn't want his draft stock to take a hit by that. Now, that leads me to my next point. Did he read all of the mock drafts that had him as a potential first round lock? I mean, based on everything that was out there a year ago, this seemed like a guarantee to be a first round pick. Maybe he was content with being the third or fourth quarterback taken in the draft and was fine wherever he went and didn't want to risk playing to hurt his stock. And that's definitely an option as well. However, with him having such a small sample size, wouldn't have made more sense for him to play and get more film out there. I get it, he had some good games at Wake Forest, but the way he finished the season, I don't know, I, I just thought he could have improved his draft stock a little based on that. Well, the 2021 NFL Draft came and went, and 10 quarterbacks were drafted, with Jamie Newman not even being one of them. He went undrafted and signed as an undrafted free agent with the Philadelphia Eagles. So, within a year, he went from being a Heisman frontrunner, a potential NFL first-round pick, to being undrafted drafted and signing with the team to potentially be their third string quarterback. It's just a really fascinating story in my opinion and I'd love to hear why Newman made the decision he made because obviously it cost him big time. So what are your thoughts on this whole Jamie Newman situation that happened over the past year? Do you think that COVID was genuinely the only reason he decided to opt out or do you think there was much more at play here? Drop a comment down below and share with me your thoughts because I would love to hear what everyone has to think on this situation. If you haven't done so yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to the channel. If you love college content like this then this is definitely the place for you and as i mentioned at the beginning of the video if there's a player you'd like to see a video on in the future drop a comment down below and it very well can be the next video i make as always thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all in my next video